For many people, this sound means nothing, just noise. For others, like me, it's the sound of printing. And this is a Commodore 803, my first printer. They came in black and also brown color. It is a dot matrix printer, meaning that the printing head is made of many pins and they strike against a cloth ink ribbon that is in contact with the paper. Each strike is a dot, many dots is a line or a shape and that's how we get the characters. These printers are also very strong and they last for a long time, but the only problem is that they are very noisy, very slow and the quality is not great. The finition is very low. I decided to get my old printer back in service, so let's clean it up, see if it still works and what it can do. This is basically the printer. It is very easy to operate. It has two serial connectors because it can be daisy changed with other devices like a floppy drive. These two switches here are to select the paper fit pitch and the device number. About the device number we will see that later when we connect the printer to the Commodore 64. This is the ink cartridge, it has a cloth ribbon inside. It goes between the printing head and the paper. I'm sure the ink here is completely dry after so many years, but in order to test it, let's print a test page, which is called. To do that, we need to make sure that the printer is off, and then we press the paper advance switch, and while we keep it pressed, we turn on the printer. Well, as expected, it is completely dry, but it looks like the printer is working. Let's try to refill the cartridge. In order to do that, I got this ink here. It's basically simple stamp ink. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I read somewhere that this is all it takes. Let's get ready. This is gonna be a very dirty process. Basically, the ribbon, which is like a cloth, needs to absorb all the ink. Maybe there is a better way of doing this. I don't know, this is what I read and I'm gonna try. Let's see if it works. I don't know, I think I'm putting a lot of ink here. Maybe I need half of it or even less than that. Let's try to remove some of it. I definitely could go to way less than half of what I put here. Well, as a result, we got a piece of art here. While we wait for the ribbon to absorb the ink, let's take apart the printer and clean it up. Taking it apart is very easy. Just a couple screws and it has some clips in the back. I expected to find a lot of dust and dirt here, but actually the motherboard looks very nice and the PCB is very shiny. And speaking of which, did you know that thanks to PCBWay, starting from just $5, you can get your PCBs directly delivered to your home. You design them, you send the schematics to PCBWay, they will print them with the best quality in the market and deliver directly to your home. They also do CNC and 3D printing and they even have an open source section where people upload their projects and you can purchase the PCBs directly made by PCBWay and get them delivered to your home. Basically PCBWay is the single point you need to get all your projects done. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. This cable here is for the paper advanced switch. This one here, I think, is the engine that moves the head. I really like that the screw hole is metal. This allows to open the printer more frequently without damaging the plastic. I think that this switch here is what tells the printer that there is paper. Let's remove the platen to take a look, but before that, let's also measure the voltage in case these capacitors have still some charge. Let's avoid any unpleasant shocks. Unfortunately, this bit here is a little bit broken, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We can put some glue on it. This is the platen. This thing is really nicely built. You see this little connector here? This goes directly to the motherboard. It is easy to take out, but a little bit tricky to put in. The printer is really clean, and in order to remove the motherboard, I will have to cut the power cable and to be honest, there is no need for that. If it was really filthy, then maybe that would be worth it. But in this case, let's just vacuum a bit the dust and use some alcohol. 
also lets you some alcohol to clean the platen. Sometimes the head ends up printing on it and it might contain some ink. Finally, let's add some silicone oil here for greasing the mechanisms. This is the same one I'm using for the 3D printer. Before we clean up the top, let's remove the cable connecting the paper advance switch. A little bit of history behind this printer. Back in the day, in 1986, I was 11 years old and this was my first printer. I really wanted one, but I couldn't justify the purchase. My dad worked as a photographer and he often needed to send letters to clients like a model release and agreements about copyright and stuff like that. He was doing that on a typewriter, but it was slow and time consuming to get several copies. So I used that as an excuse to convince him to get a printer that would make it all easier and faster. On a second hand magazine, there was this guy in Rome selling the printer, so we went to his home to pick it up. This was all before eBay and Facebook market, and that's how I became the head printer at home. While we wait for the top of the printer to dry out after washing it, let's put the platen back in. This is the broken bead here. Nothing too serious, a little bit of glue should fix it. I like to use these kind of glues that have two compounds, they're usually way stronger. Now that the cover is dry, let's put the paper advance switch back. The glue it had was quite old, gonna replace it with a new one. Also to fix the cable in the case, I like to use some nano tape. Well, now it's time to put it all back together. Let's see if the ink experiment worked. Let's try to print a test page. Yeah, the experiment worked and we have ink again. As you can see, it still has a lot of ink. I should find a way to distribute it more homogeneously, but I guess after printing some pages, it should be fine. The overlapping lines here is not the printer's fault. It was my fault that just reversed the paper a little bit back when it was printing, but that's fine. Now let's get some action and connect it to the Commodore 64. Let's see what the printer can do. I had it all plugged here on the Commodore 64 and this is my new Commodore corner. Finally, I have my Commodore 64 next to the Amiga. I didn't have a space before, but I managed to arrange this in a way that allowed me to just turn it on and use it anytime I want. In order to just print a hello world, it's very simple. We need to use the command open, and then we have which is called a file number and a device number. So remember before when I was showing the switch saying about the device number on the printer, that's what the device number here is for. Because you can connect this printer and daisy chain where, for example, with a floppy drive, meaning that by knowing the device number, you know which of them you're gonna use. The file number is just a number that you assign to this connection, to this link, and then later on we have to close it. So now this command is there. Now we have that file number associated with that device. So if we want to print, for example, Hello World, we type the same normal print in BASIC, and then we use the pound sign or the hashtag or the name I prefer for it, the Octothorpe. That's basically one of the names it has. Then we set the file number and here whenever we want to print. When we press enter, it will send that to the printer. Once we are done with this, we need to always close the file. And that closed that link. Now, obviously printing this way is gonna be very, very exhausting and difficult. The manual already have a lot of instructions here that you can use and example programs showing all the capabilities of the printer. But still, even if you get everything this manual is saying, it's going to be a lot of work if you want to print, for example, a letter. So for that, you need a word processor like this one, for example, WordCraft 40 or any other word processor. This is the one I had. 
This came with a printer when I bought it uh, second hand from that guy in Rome I mentioned before. So when I went there with my dad, the guy saw that I was so into computers that also gave me these two books here, Sprites and Sound for the Commodore 64 and the Machine Language of the Commodore 64. When I was there, I said that I wanted to make games, but basic is too slow and I couldn't actually get the things. I didn't know how the games did what they did. So he gave me these two books and said, if you want to make games, you need to learn machine language. And that basically blew my mind. I had no idea at the time, of course, I was a kid. So I just read these books and I learned how to program machine language and learned about sprites and sound and all the, the secrets, basically, of how the games were made because I wanted to make my own games. I think it's interesting to see that such a simple gesture had such massive impact in my career later on because at that early age I was able to get in touch with concepts like machine language, registers and assembly language and all that sort of things. So before we put the cartridge we need to turn off the Commodore. Always remember put the cartridges always when the machine is off otherwise you might damage it. And this is the first screen that we get. From here, we can leave basically everything almost default. The only important things here are, for example, the storage, if you are gonna save your program in disk or tape. And also here, F2 to select if it is a CBM or RS-232 or parallel, basically CBM, because this is a Commodore printer. Press space. And here in this program, we have two modes. Basically, it's command mode and type mode. So in common mode, we set parameters that we need for, for the document that we want to write. In this case, I want to have everything in front of the screen. And the Commodore 64 has 40 columns by 25 rows. So one comment is W for the width of the screen. And we set this as 40. And you see here, it changed to 40. And then I set the lines. 23 because these two lines here are already taking space on the screen so I set the command as 23 and we will see that it's changed here 23 to start typing we just press run stop and it changed from command to type so now we can just happily start typing our text hello this a uh, new video about the Commodore printer 803 now, if I want to create a new line, I just press F7. And if I press it again, I have one more line. This is a new line. But we can also center that line. If we press Commodore and equal, that line now is centered. And if we press F7 again, we go new lines. We can add more text here. Okay, I think that's enough. Now, if we want to print this, we go back to command mode, press P, and then return. It's going to ask us to press space to print to confirm. Well, that's pretty much it. It's a printer. Now, you can see this is kind of a primitive version of a modern word processing program like Word or Pages, OpenOffice. But at the time, it was extremely useful. It's what I used to help my dad with those documents needed for photography. I later on use it a lot to print source code because the Commodore 64 has only 25 rows. So if you have a long program, explore it through the screen. It's going to be very exhausting. Something common at the time was paper like this. This is called continuous paper. What it means is that every sheet of paper is connected to the next one. So the printer never ends, keeps printing and keeps pulling more and more paper and keep printing more and more. That was very useful when you have a lot of source code to print. Finally, I would like to connect this printer to a PC. And I saw some videos around that apparently it's possible by using a device that has been commonly used to connect a PC to the floppy drive, the 1541, to basically access the floppy drives there or create a new one based on a file. Now, because the printer connects through the serial port and that device does that the same, technically it should be possible. I saw some projects around doing that. I need to do more research, but that would be very cool to connect, for example, a Raspberry Pi or something, have it like a printing service at home that you can just send some documents and print something in there. To keep updated on these projects and more that I'm working on, consider supporting the channel through Patreon. 
there are some perks on it because you can have behind the scenes content, more content and direct communication. That small contribution with some perks is going to help me a lot to keep the lights on and creating more of these videos. Let me know if you had a printer like this, what was your experience or if you managed to connect it to a PC, I would be really, really interested to know that. Thank you for watching.